Here is the magnificent new Furman University campus, five miles north of Greenville, South Carolina, where nine of the major buildings are completed or will be completed by September 1958. Furman University students will enjoy pleasant relaxation in comfortable lounge rooms like this in the new dormitories in the fall of 58. It is a place where boy may meet girl, where parents may visit their young people, and where guests may relax with the students. Here in the student's room is everything for his comfort and convenience, for study and pleasant living. Modern desks, chairs, bookshelves, and good lighting combine to encourage work and study. Each room has its own laboratory. Several bathrooms are located in the dormitories, convenient to all bedrooms. Furman University students will take real pride in their living quarters. University moved from a two-year residential requirement to a three-year residential requirement in 1996. And then in 2001, we went from a three-year residential requirement to a four-year. And the purpose behind that is what we call an intentional engagement strategy. We knew that when students live on campus, from all of the national research that's been done for decades, that their success in the classroom is greater, their engagement outside of the classroom is greater, and that their affinity after graduation is also greater. They're more likely to graduate, they're more likely to leave with a higher grade point average and to be more satisfied with their experience. And so <clears throat> moving to a four-year requirement, we understood that, that that would only magnify everything else that they're doing here. And so <clears throat> In contrast to what we see at most campuses, where the residential environment is robust and very energetic and spirited, here it's a little different because when they're on campus, for, when students are on campus for four years, it doesn't mean that the residential environment is more robust and more, more spirited. It means that the rest of campus is. So students who are on campus for four years not only are more engaged in the residential environment, but they're much more engaged in the campus community. So our, our operational mantra in the assignments office within our greater department is that we want students to live where they want, with whom they want, whenever possible. And while we can't satisfy that 100% of the time, what we can do is be flexible and creative and willing to always do whatever we can to make switches. And oftentimes that, that isn't just about saying, okay, we've received your request to move from this space to this space or this type of space, but rather working with other people to try to satisfy their request so that when they move, their space can be used to satisfy somebody else's request. It's this giant game of dominoes. And so, so what I hope students would understand is that if, 
whether they need some sort of change or accommodation or they simply want it, just let us know. Come in, sit down with us, explain it out with us, help us understand the full breadth of what you're looking for and, and you know what, what you absolutely need. And on the other end, what would just be nice. And then trust that we'll do whatever we can to try to get that done for you. Sometimes, unfortunately, we can't do it. Um, but, you know, whatever we can, we will. So we have a few students who are exempt from living on campus. Most of those students are, uh, they, they satisfy the, um, the commuter exemption. And, and that exemption requires people to live at home with their immediate family. And in some cases that's a mom or a dad or a mom and a dad. In some cases that may be a grandmother who's their legal guardian. Um, and most of those folks were admitted as a commuter student. And so the university knew from the time that they were admitted that they were probably going to be commuting from home. We have a few other students uh, from time to time who also qualify for an exemption. Um, those students may get married, they may give birth, they may um, be the biological parent of a, of a newborn, or they may um, have a, um, a family member that they need to assist in taking care of. Uh, and in any of those cases, we will exempt them from living on campus. Partly, we understand that how important it is to student success that they live on campus. And we, we see all the time that students are living off campus, they don't earn as good enough grades or as th their grades aren't as high as, as residential students. They're less likely to graduate and oftentimes they either don't graduate or it takes them longer to graduate. And so this is really, in the end, it's about student success, about them not only graduating from here and graduating on time and being successful in the classroom, but getting a lot more out of their experience while they're here. We, uh, we developed a comprehensive communication plan a few years back. <clears throat> the first thing we had to do, I, I'll just tell you reflectively that when, uh, when I got to Furman, students hated our department passionately. Um, and it was pretty easy to understand why. We didn't communicate with students. Uh, what, when we did send them messages, they were very poor. Uh, they weren't organized, they weren't coordinated, they didn't um, spell out the point, they didn't uh, attempt to answer the expected or anticipated questions that someone would have. And so we developed a comprehensive communication plan and that and our office uses that plan to drive all of our messages to students. Well, currently there's, there's two different layers to that. Um, there's the, the work order layer and then there's the personnel layer. The work order layer um, begins with a student submitting a, a maintenance request online. That maintenance request comes to our office and we look at it. It goes directly into the email inbox of one of our staff members. He looks at it and he, he really considers one question. <clears throat> is this for us to do or is this for facility services to do? If it's for us to do, he assigns it to a member of our team and then they're expected to go and uh, complete it. It's given a priority so they know, is this something I need to drop everything and go do it right now? Or is this something that I need to do as soon as I come in in the morning? Or is this something that can wait till later in the day? If it's something that needs to go to facility services, then he forwards it to that office and then picks up the phone and calls them and said, hey, I just sent this over to you. And then he works with them to understand the priority from the from the housing and residence life perspective, which was something that used to be missing years back. Uh, facility services was assigning their own priority to the work orders that that fell within the residential community, and students were dissatisfied. And to be frank, we felt like, you know, the priority was wrong too. And so we we've done a we've addressed that in the process. Um, <clears throat> On the personnel layer, we have three people in this office 
who are each liaisons to different levels and facility services. So we have an assistant director, Matt Riddle, who directly supervises our custodians, and he's a liaison to all the trades people and facility services. So the plumbers, the electric electricians, the carpenters, all of those folks. Um, and then we have an associate director, Carson Refridge, and she's the liaison to the person who supervises all of those people. So the person who doles out all the work and makes sure that everything's getting done and communicates on behalf of facility services, she and he talk regularly. And then at the executive level, I work directly with the associate vice president who oversees facilities and grounds, Jeff Redderson, and we talk regularly about kind of the 30,000 foot level, you know, what's working, what's not working, what are we each doing to address it. All right, that's a story about firm and housing. Um, well, we've lived in the same apartment for four years, my roommates and I, or for two years rather, not four. Uh, and between those two periods, we had to move out and then move back in, which I think is absolutely ridiculous because it's not like, you know, we're moving into a different apartment, we're moving back in to the exact same apartment. And that's just one small example. Then there was the issue with the dog. Uh, one of my roommates struggles heavily with uh, germs. He has uh, severe germophobia. And uh, because of this, he got a service animal to help him. And it took them two semesters to approve this dog for what can be really attributed to a pretty serious uh, disease. No, not disease. Uh, but then, yeah, other than that, permanent housing's uh, really expensive uh, to live on campus when there's housing that's cheaper around campus. Well, uh, Drew bought a, uh, like, uh, carpet cleaner and after he cleaned our carpets I was scared that I ever walked on them without shoes because they were absolutely filthy so if you live in North Village I would recommend borrowing Drew's carpet cleaner because <laughs> it was really 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 bad it was like black yeah that was gross um, the air filter was not clean <laughs> at all yeah, no, it's like they didn't even, like, clean it during the summer. It was really, really strange. My mom could have, like, unscrewed the thing to put a new air filter in. She would have, but uh, she couldn't find out how. Because it, it was gross. It was really, really gross. And there's definitely a lot of sickness in our apartment because of it. A lot of mold. Um, we have to change our shower curtain, like, four or five times a year because it gets really mildewy really fast. And, uh... I don't know if that's directly related to how the shower is set up or just how gross the apartments are. Oh, one other thing. Uh, the fact that there is no um, like washer or dryer in the apartments as well as no dishwasher, uh, I don't fully trust like hand washing dishes. So having to eat off dishes, like I think you buy paper and plastic, just bad for the environment, of course, as well as the fact that just sometimes the um, washer and dryers don't work and they're on the second and third floor. There's none on the first floor where we live. So that, that makes it really difficult. And there's only two washers and two dryers on each floor for an apartment complex. Well, a lot of the times the washers and dryers are broken, which isn't helpful. And uh, one has been broken for uh, like two years and they've never replaced it. Um, so for an apartment complex our size, like building up high, there isn't a lot of, like you have to wait. Like sometimes a day is just your laundry. Um, but yeah, urban housing's got a lot of issues. So we woke up to it raining in our apartment. Um, the guys that live above us, their toilet had overflowed into our bathroom. 
and it was like pouring heavy water like into our bathroom so much so that it like started to flood the entire thing and the like sides the door frame on my door was like leaking and running uh, and so we called maintenance the next day and they came and like looked around and saw that it was still like very much damp and wet after we cleaned it all up and they told us that since it was clear water it was fine and just like clean it up on our own and just left and like didn't even check to see if like there should be any precautions taken to make sure we don't get sick or ill from the incident and they didn't even check the guy's bathroom upstairs so they like started the initial leak and it went down to every floor so like from the third to the second to the first. Last year when we were living in North Village G, we had a situation where we went on break and the fridge broke over the break. And when the fridge broke, all of our food went bad. So when we got back, we had to throw away all the food in our fridge. Um, and housing really didn't do anything about that besides replace the fridge, not take care of the you know, food that was lost. Last year when we lived in North Village, we had a situation where the hot water, um, the hot water went out 11 different instances. Um, and they kept saying they were replacing the issue. Um, they were fixing it but it never uh, actually was fixed until the 11th time. So we went, you know, sometimes hours, sometimes days without hot water uh, in the building. And, you know, they kept saying they were gonna fix it, but, you know, they weren't really doing much about it, obviously. Um, another situation we had was, uh, you know, when I lived in North Village C, um, in our shower, I noticed the wall was starting to peel a little bit uh, in the shower area. So it looked pretty black behind that spot. So I tried to peel it back a little bit more and the entire wall behind, you know, where we peeled it back was covered in mold. So I took a knife and I kind of ripped open the wall a little bit and all of it was black behind there. Um, so we, you know, I spoke to housing and they immediately sent someone out and they had to rip out the entire drywall above the, the shower and, and redo that part. Um, they did it very quickly, which was good, but I mean, it just shows that there was a big problem uh, with the ventilation in the bathrooms and, you know, it, not only there, but everywhere we've lived since has had a problem with the mold in the uh, in the shower, the shower curtain, you constantly have to replace it. Um, no matter what you do, even if you leave the fan on or try to open it when you're done, it doesn't really matter. It will continuously get covered in mold. Besides, we had a vent that would blow dust into our room every day. Our stuff would be covered in like a sheet of dust until I duct tape over one of the vents. I think it came straight from the laundry room and all the lint was just blowing into the room. It was disgusting. Um, yeah, last year I had a gaping wet hole in my ceiling um, that was beginning to form because it was a broken pipe. Um, and so the whole ceiling turned a different color and then we started having a leak. And we didn't really know what to do with this, so we called housing and they took a hole in our wall. And so we come back and our couch is moved and there's a giant bucket filling with water. So obviously there's probably some mold. Um, 
And so they, they patched it up, but they told us, yeah, that leak can't get fixed. We'll probably have to come in later, um, maybe over the summer, and open up your whole wall because that one specific pipe wasn't, wasn't going to be able to get fixed on its own. Um, so another day we came back and it was all patched up, and they never really, that we know of, came back and fixed it. So I'm curious to see if that opens up again. Uh, another issue I've had is the black mold in my bathroom. I've asked multiple times for them to come and, uh, well, maybe twice to come and clean it. And they came and cleaned it, but it keeps coming back because the fan isn't very good um, or really circulation in general. And so, like, my roommate got sick one time from the black mold. Um, I was allergic to mold as a kid, so, like, I think everyone's allergic to mold, but like as a kid, it was like actually like a diagnosis. So that was bad. Um, I guess first off, so I was lucky enough to be moved to North Village my sophomore year. We got to live in B, which was really awesome and I was super excited about it. Um, but I don't know, I guess it wasn't like as I expected it to be. We had a lot of problems with like first off, a lot of our appliances didn't end up working. Like in the kitchen, we had to call for a lot of like maintenance requests, and there's a lot of like a lot of leak leakages, <laughs> leakages within like our sink, and it would drip down into the bottom part of the sink, which would cause black mold. Like I occasionally noticed the black mold against my window seal and within our bathroom. Um, we always had to like currently replace um, the what is that called? Shower curtain. Yeah, we always had to replace the shower curtain because of how bad the black mold would get. But overall, it just became a normal thing for us. Um, it wasn't until my junior year where I actually ended up getting really ill from the black mold. I ended up getting bronchitis, which I ended up turning into pneumonia because they said that the black mold within, which was against my um, window seal and within the ceiling that we had, that I ended up having to get replaced um, and they still left a gaping hole within our apartment, um, so that was also a problem, but yeah, and also within our bathroom too. Um, all of that was a reason of why I ended up getting bronchitis and pneumonia, so that was kind of scary because I wasn't able to breathe at all. There was like liquid within my lungs, um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, now I live off campus. Um, getting sick being one of the main reasons why I did leave campus. Um, I don't know, I just left because, yeah, black mold was a issue but also just how they have the apartments built and how they have it set up is just so old and not up to date with our generation and I feel like it honestly brings a different mood within 
the atmosphere that you're living in, which doesn't, it's not a positive mood. Um, being a Division One athlete, uh, I'm here basically almost the whole, all year round. And so it was kind of frustrating because I lived in Building E and um, they told me they, I had to move out even though I was going to be back in June. Um, they made me move all my stuff out and being from Colorado that means I have to go spend more money and put it in a storage locker. Um, I guess it's just really frustrating because I know that Furman will rent those places out to help them make money um, for other business conferences that they're having and whatnot. But that's just frustrating for me because that means I have to go out and spend more money on a storage locker to put my stuff in and also the process of I am going to be back in June so it's like a back and forth movement of my storage locker and then to the different apartment that I'm going to have to stay in and then putting it back in the storage locker because I have to go back home after that and it's just like a consistent, like consistent annoying battle of money and moving back and forth over and over again when it could be very simple and I could just stay in the same apartment that I've decided to stay in and not spend all that money. If they're going to make all their students live on campus or make it a priority or a mandatory thing, they need to not have the last renovation. I actually looked this up, the last renovation being in 2001 of the apartments. They need to keep it up to date make it feel more homey for their students, to feel more comfortable and have a place to get away so that it makes it better and more livable and just a better experience at Furman.